and welcome to RISE. I am so delighted to have here today Dr. Kat Hajgins. Yes, thank you. She is a clinical psychologist and certified trainer in psychodrama and group psychotherapy. She is an international trainer and author on the therapeutic spiral model to treat trauma. She brings a warm heart and a lighted spirit and integrates diversity from the 42 countries she has worked in during her career. <laughs> Welcome, Kate. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. It's an exciting um, opportunity to be part of your network. Thank you so much. I can't wait to dive in into the therapeutic spiral model. Can you please talk about mm. it? Yeah, so the therapeutic spiral model is something that came out of my personal integration of um, growing up with a childhood um, history of, uh, of trauma, of sexual trauma growing up, and kind of coming into the world as a psychologist and, and like starting my training and going like, well, like what's really going on here? Right? You know, because I was still untreated. And in 19, I mean, I'm, I won't say how old I am, um, but in the, in, the, in the early years, um, PTSD wasn't even diagnosed until 1987. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got my PhD in 1986. Mm -hmm. So it was a brand new diagnosis when I started practice. And what I saw was I had it. I saw I had it and that there was no adequate treatment for it. I mean, certainly as a new budding psychologist, I sought treatment from any place I could, but nobody really was helpful. And so I discovered psychodrama along the way. And psychodrama at the time, classical psychodrama was very emotive, cathartic, um, beautiful, and uncontained. Mm -hmm. So as a trauma survivor, I would do psychodramas where I was telling my story, I was expressing emotion, but I wouldn't remember what I'd done. So I might like, like beat a bataka, you know, like an anger. And afterward I would say, well, who was I even talking to or what was going on? And so my PhD professor said, ah, you know, Kate, I think you were dissociated with that experiential work. So how do you make it safe was my question. How do I make experiential work, which I knew the first moment I did it was my healing. I knew to go into the body, to be with the earth, to be with, you know, that I knew that. So I made it my mission to kind of take classical psychodrama and make it safe through what we call the therapeutic spiral model. And that's the kind of the first spark of where it began. I can definitely resonate with what you um, mm. talking about. Uh, I myself started psychology uh, studies and I dumped it um, after a few, <laughs> a few months yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Um, because I couldn't see how that's going to help me where I was with my trauma. And, um, and I think that many of us are in a state of PSTD without even knowing that. It actually become yes. almost a norm. And so, mm. so how do you work with, with that through uh, psychodrama? I would love to know. So, so it really has become a norm. I mean, in 1987, you know, the, D, the DSM, the Diagnostics Manual, said that like, oh, PTSD is basically war trauma. And certainly what the Me Too movement and anything else, you know, the racial justice movement shows is that PTSD is not limited to war trauma. It is, it is pervasive. And so it's become a more normalized um, diagnosis. It's even a diagnosis that got changed when the DSM got changed just a couple of years ago in 19, I don't know, actually. Sorry, I should remember as a psychologist, but I don't. But it became a stress-related diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Like PTSD became a clear stress-related diagnosis. So what it means is that, you know, if something bad happened to you, you might have about something bad happening to you. If you have good new experiences, experiential therapy, you have good new experiences, then your brain can change in the other way. It can become positive. 
And that's what we know now. I mean, 1996, when I first started creating the 1992 to 1995, when I created the therapeutic spiral model, we did not know anything about neurobiology. All we knew is like, is somebody present, stable, able to process something, or are they dissociated, regressed, or gone? Mm-hmm. Like that was kind of the level of where we were working at in 1986. 1987, coming into our work in 1992. 1996, they did the first neurobiology study showing how trauma dysregulates the brain. But we'd already figured out how to do it clinically. So that's what we do with psychodrama is we say, experiential work, we love it, we adore it. It's absolutely what has to happen. If you can't get into the experience of things, new or old, you can't change. And how to do it safely is what TSM, psych, TSM, psychodrama, therapeutic spiral model psychodrama has contributed. And I can wax poetic, so you have to like stop me when you want an answer, you know? I mean, I've spent my life doing this, you know? I've spent my life doing this. I, first of all, I honor you for that. This is really such mm. a commitment and I love what you're doing and it's so needed. So mm. just a, a huge shout out for, for all that you do. Mm. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so you, you have taken uh, psychology to a whole other level. You widen your horizons. Uh, I know you got some mm-hmm. shamanic training um, yeah. interwoven into your work. Um, yeah, can you, can you maybe dive a little bit into that and how all of it fits yeah. into your healing model? Yeah, thank you, Nancy. The, the, um, the, there's three, three strands of the therapeutic spiral. So the first strand, um, actually, if I had a diagram, I don't do share screenings because I prefer to be with the human beings and um, sharing screens, but the first strand is is pink. And it is about building strengths, building safety. So what classical psychodrama didn't do was it didn't build safety. It would just like, you know, you come in and say like, oh, I want to confront my perpetrator. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you'd pick somebody to be your perpetrator and then you'd start doing that and you'd be two years old. You know, there'd be no adult state left. You know, to just be like the person is like collapsed on the ground and they're supposed to be a two-year-old telling, you know, their perpetrator, like what happened. That doesn't obviously work. But they didn't know that at the time, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and so, so as, a, as a trauma survivor myself who would do these cathartic dramas and then not remember them, and as a clinical psychologist whose professor said, you know, Kate, if you don't remember it, you were dissociated. He said, there's really no point in doing a drama if you're dissociated. You won't remember the experience. It won't make a change. You'll go back and you'll keep beating the bataka forever. And I went, wow, what an aha, right? Mm. So that, so, so first strand is safety. Mm-hmm. building up strengths, being able to stay in a conscious state of awareness while you bring the trauma onto stage, into the therapy office, into the healing ceremony, but whatever, but you stay conscious, you don't leave. Because if you leave, then there's no healing possible. Mm-hmm. So like that's, you know, so scene one in psychodrama now, and it's not just in TSM psychodrama, it's in most psychodrama now, Mm-hmm. Most people know to do that scene first. Do they give credit to TSM? Mm, not likely, not often, and it's okay, you know, pass it on. Um, and then the second strand of the spiral is experiencing. And that is the love I found for psychodrama the first time I met it. I mean, it was just like, wow, you're in your body, you're speaking things from inside yourself out loud. That's called surplus reality. So the internal reality is put out there, the surplus reality. You're speaking things that like people don't normally get to hear. And then something shifts. The surplus reality changes to what's the healing scene. Like, what didn't you get to say? What Mm -hmm. would you like to have heard? I did a Mm -hmm. session this morning where somebody was leaving their home country and leaving their parents behind and they had to do it. And the drama was about what would the ideal parents say to enable that son, a 40 year old man to make this big journey. So it's always that piece. And so the shamanistic influence came in 
the very first time I did a psychodrama in a psychodrama theater that I had built. I had built it with the help of Zerka Moreno. Yeah, sorry, the phone's, we should just stop here a moment while the phone does its thing. <laughs> All right, here, okay, it's done. All right. mm -hmm. No worries. I'll... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so actually um, what I wanna do is, is talk about the shamanic um, connection and it comes through Zerka Moreno, who is the founder, co-founder of Psychodrama. Um, a Russian Jew um, who came through the Holocaust to bring her sister to JL Moreno. And that's how psychodrama started. Mm. And so she was one of my mentors. And so she gave me the plans of the original psychodrama theater in upstate New York. And she and I built a second original theater, except she said it was more beautiful because the original theater was like um, four black walls and no windows. And people got locked in there. Not really a good thing in many ways, right? So my theater, my psychodrama theater is called the Psychodrama Theater of Protection because that first time I did the first workshop there on the land, it was a house and there was land where we were gonna build the theater. There was this Native American woman here there who was hanging out at the end. and. I, so I said, why are you hanging out there? And she said, you're doing shamanic work. So from then on for seven years, every time we did work at the Psychodrama Theater of Protection, which is Zerka Moreno had dedicated every single time from that, we were able to just give back to the earth. Give, I mean, to learn all the native tr traditions. We built um, a, um, a sweat lodge we got the grandfathers. I mean, you know, at my age now, I look back and I say, oh my God, at 30 something, we did what? I mean, because we would get up at 6.30 in the morning. We would say prayers around the spirit fire. We would have our breakfast. Then we would do a three hour, four hour psychodrama. Then we would have our lunch and we would do a three or four hour psychodrama. Then we would have our dinner and then we do a three or four hour psychodrama. And then we would be doing a sweat lodge till one or two in the morning. And we would start all over again. So, you know, like the shamanic thing was so embedded in the therapeutic spiral model from the beginning, not because I thought it, but because this woman came in and she asked not to be named. So I always choose not to name her. She, she is a, a native person who believes her path is to teach white women hmm. to bring it into the world and prefers not to have her name be part of that for whatever reason. <laughs> Wow, so this actually found you, looks like, right? Um, mm -hmm. it, it was sent into your work yes, and as Absolutely. a gift. Right. Well, as a gift and a challenge, yeah. a gift and a challenge. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got buried up into my thighs in the middle of a, you know, in the <laughs> middle of the woods and, you know, lots of things got, got happening with the sweat lodge and everything else that was going on. I mean, things, as a city girl, like there's actually a picture of me in our newsletter. Um, from you know, what was it, year 1995, maybe, right? So there's a picture of me carrying wood um, up to the up the hill to where our spirit fire is, and I have nice little shorts with good pockets, and everything's good. The title of it is Barbie Goes Woodsy. <laughs> so Barbie doll, Barbie doll goes woodsy. Yeah, so this this is you know, it kind of was it was very interesting that the shamanic influence did seek me out. It wasn't anything that I actually thought. Oh, I need to study this. I need to do this. It was somebody who actually came toward me. Yeah. Yeah. And how did that influence your your work, or mm. what impact did it have on on the people that came to yeah. do uh, trauma healing with you? So for the seven years there, we did have people. Uh, men and women who came to do their own personal healing. And that's where we developed the therapeutic spiral model on people willing to come and trust us enough that would say like, yeah, okay, like you've got something different. Mm -hmm. Because again, remember at that time, 1992, 1995, there was different, there was talk therapy. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. there became CBT therapy. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, we're going like, yeah, I think experiential therapy is the way to go, but how do we do it safely? 
Mm -hmm. So we had, you know, many people who came there and we had people internationally that came. We had people from New Zealand and Australia, England and our first cohorts that came there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so we, we just kept like kind of sorting out in an in vivo lab really of like, what is the best way to do this? And the spiritual dimension was always there from the very beginning because of that Mohawk woman who showed up in our very first workshop. And, and, and when I asked her what she's doing there, you know, she's trying to help me do shamanic work correctly. She also gave a gift that, that night of what was the name for the psychodrama theater that was going to be built. It wasn't built mm. yet, the land was just there. And so she asked what an image was and I got a bear. And then she decided and helped me figure out that the name of the theater was the Psychodrama Theater of Protection. Mm -hmm. So that's where TSM started, was in a big, amazing, beautiful psychodrama theater where what is in here, surplus reality, could be put out on the stage and looked at with safety as we figured out how to make it safe. And so I'm a firm believer that experiential therapy is the absolute way to do um, healing for people who've had trauma. Like mm -hmm. we've been in the dark world, right? We've lived in the dark world. We've experienced the dark world. So how can you only talk about that? It's not enough just to talk about it. You have to have somebody like go back with you and say like, let's, okay, let's come out of the dark world in a new way. And that's what TSM is about. So is it a little bit like family constellation? Is uh, somebody, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. So these uh, people uh, playing different roles and uh, there's an interaction? Mm -hmm. Yep, so a lot of people do um, compare TSM with internal family systems. Mm -hmm. And in TSM, all of the roles are internalized. So they're all roles inside your own psyche. Mm -hmm. um, so there may be internalized father, mother, grandparents, you know, generational trauma. Um, and that may be in your body and you may find mm -hmm. it in your body through mm -hmm. our technique called the body double, which helps you tune into your body, what you're, you're, you're carrying transgenerationally. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's very similar. The difference is for me, um, and you know, I'm not a big studier I mean, just, you know, of, of IFS, I just know a little bit, um, is that they use a perceptual field of bringing in ancestral energies, whereas TSM is a little more psychologically rigid, I would have to say, where, where we say like, okay, the transgenerational energies are there, but what role are they? What role? Was it the grandmother, the great grandmother, the ancient wise woman? Who's giving this message? Not just the energy of it, but what's the role? And then what's the message for change? So they're similar. Um, you wow, know, powerful, again. powerful. I, I have energy yeah. surges through my body because. Ah, okay, good. Yeah, good. I. I totally resonate with uh, you saying that we own all those roles within us we, yes. we actually we, yes. the, the makeup of our being is exactly consisting of all those that all work before us right and that we have yeah. their genetic yeah. information through epigenetics and um, right which is yeah. so fascinating it's isn't fascinating. it I mean, it's so fascinating how does a role come out of the cells in your body the cells in your brain, but they do. They do. And, and I'm they sure do. you're familiar with yeah. the research of the mice, right? And the cherry blossom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mm -hmm. have to, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, or, or, the, or the monkeys, you know, the, oh, monkeys, the monkeys where, yeah, the, you know, 500 monkeys or whatever monkeys can wash yeah. their hands and then all of a sudden 500 monkeys can do that. I mean, how does that happen? It's just so fascinating. Right. What is really available in the spiritual, material, cosmic world. Yeah, I just want to elaborate on that for the audience that may be um, mm. not familiar with that, so, so they understand what we're talking about. Uh, sure. There have been a research done on mice where they introduced them uh, with a, a very specific scent, cherry blossom. And when they did that, they also inflicted some very intense pain uh, using pain, yeah. Yeah, um, electric um, shocking. Shock. 
and uh, those mice had a very specific reaction yeah, where they were they swirling and yeah and then they um they let those mice have babies and they separated the babies as yeah. they were born so the babies couldn't learn by watching behavior and when the babies were introduced to the same smell they had exactly the same behavioral reaction yeah. as their parents <laughs> without ever yeah. being introduced to the pain Never as well having... Yeah. And that actually Amazing. ran in generations. They say even up to seven generations. So if mice can, yeah. can transmit that behavior in seven generations, what happens with us human beings when we go, you know, seven right. generations backwards, right? Right. So, right. yeah. And, so, what and TSM is also about going seven generations into the future. Yes. Post-traumatic growth. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's that's why I reference the monkeys, because I, I I think it's five hundred monkeys or is it fifty monkeys? I'm not quite sure. But when when there's so, some number, do you know? Do you know? The I, I think it's a hundred because they call it the hundred monkeys. Uh, okay, a hundred. Um, a hundred monkeys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, same same. <laughs> it's a it's a it's so, that so, yeah, critical so, mess. So, yeah. Critical mass that at some point monkeys on different islands mm -hmm. start doing the same behavior. Mm -hmm. And that when 100, 500, whatever it is, there's a critical mass, mm -hmm. all monkeys seem to know how to do that. And it's like, mm -hmm. how does that happen? It's so interesting and curious. Like, how does that, what cosmic force? And that is part of psychodrama, even you know, outside of the shamanic influence. Mm -hmm. Psychodrama is a belief that we are all cosmic beings. Mm -hmm. And, and that we are connected as cosmic beings. And, you know, we, we come and we leave, we come and we leave, but we're all cosmic beings. So, you know, take, take what you want from that and leave the rest as we say, but you know, that's the, the basic thing that, yeah, we're all connected. And if, you know, the 99th monkey makes a difference for monkeys on the other island, or if the, the pain of something from generations before is still held in the cells, how do we change it? Right. And the good news is that, first of all, yeah. we can change it. So we can change it. Yes, that yeah. is the good news. That's Absolutely. the good news. And also, mm. when we do that, we, we really heal backwards and forwards, as you said. So yes. when yes. we decide to make that decision and take that um, commitment to heal or make that choice to heal, the, mm -hmm. And we decide to to actually uh, feel in order to heal, yes. right? Because yeah. um, a lot of our uh, mothers and fathers and and couldn't you know great mothers they, they couldn't do it. Um, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. They were not conscious enough. No. There was not enough resources out there. They, they were surviving. They, they were, were surviving, surviving. They, in a very had, yeah yeah yeah. yeah. They, I mean, we talk about being survivors. You know, my generation, your generation, the younger generation. I mean, how what transgenerational beings dealt with before us? They had no choice. Mm -hmm. They truly had no choice, other than the ancient wisdom. You know, and some of them did find the ancient wisdom, and that's. That's, that's the lineage we look for in TSM, mm -hmm. is what is the lineage of what came forward, not only in the epigenetic trauma track, but what came through in the post-traumatic growth, spiritual dimension track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, there's some really good researchers about post-traumatic growth, um, Tadeshi and Calhoun. And they've actually looked at six areas of post-traumatic growth mental, uh, physical, I always get this wrong, physical first, physical, mm -hmm. mental, emotional, psychological, interpersonal, and spiritual. Mm -hmm. And in each area, uh, it, what, it, what the research shows is that only one third of people actually develop PTSD after a trauma. Two thirds of them don't. Two thirds of them move to post-traumatic growth. Their mind expands, their physical self-care is better, their emotions are able to tolerate more emotions. Their psychological self is better. Their connections are better. And they have a bigger spirituality. 
that's like you know we started out a long you know in 1992 trauma 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 <laughs> then the native american woman came and said yeah maybe there's something beyond trauma like you know it's been around for thousands and thousands of thousands of years like you know it's in the rocks it's in the stones it's everywhere like so how do you just like keep it moving towards something else and then as a clinical psychologist i found the researcher that said like oh here we go and anytime you tell me something in research i'm like yeah. It took the Native American woman years to get me to believe what she said. I, I experienced it all, but I was like, oh, okay, well, you tell me your bed's like spinning around underneath me. I don't think it happened, but she said, it did happen. I'm like, okay, I can see the uh, things on the floor. It did happen. All right. You know, so like it took much longer than that than you giving me a research study and saying, oh, the research study says. <laughs> So I want to share that I have experienced it myself, mm. and this is exactly ah, what I wrote yes. about in my book, right? Because it's transformed trauma mm. into sovereign power, soulful yes. purpose, and sacred pleasure. And I am talking from my own experience because mm. I really believe that this is my sacred mission and my sacred work that I am doing right now. And, uh, and I had the initiations, if you will, to to go to the, uh, through the underworld and be able to find mm. that within myself, right? So, you know, coming from a, a I, I, I like to work a lot uh, with the primal wounds that we all have yeah. as a collective, no matter where we come from, right? And I know that you've been, you've been working with a lot of um, different uh, traditions which is interesting yeah. because um mm. you know we experience and, our but, history but they're, is a all, bit different. They're, they're all the they're same, all the same the right yeah. Yeah, all, and, yeah they're all the same in the end yeah. and i feel that you know our very primal wound starts with the mother wound and the father wound right as our feminine and masculine role models um creators if you will and um and I had a very potent double dose mother wounds and very potent double dose father wounds. And, um, and I really had to experience it to the core of my being. And, you know, when I say very potent is from, you know, saving my mother's life from committing suicide when I was six years old and, and instantly becoming her therapist and, and trying to uh, make her stay alive and be happy. And, and she wanted to commit suicide because she met this new man and she wasn't happy with my father. She wanted divorce. And then when we moved to stay with this man, he was sexually abusing me. So I was in a conflict between, you know, worried about what my mother will say. And sure. um, even sure. even in, whether you were safe, whether you were safe, or whether, not, whether was I was safe, whether you were safe. exactly. Yeah. And so. Question? Yeah, and so that was that lasted for about three years. And when I eventually told my grandmother because I just could not live with that anymore, mm, my mother good. didn't believe me. She didn't believe me. Uh, and uh, did, you, did, you, did your grandmother? Did your grandmother believe you? Uh, my grandmother did believe me, although she doubted herself later on. Um, but um, yeah, that was the day that I moved to live with my father, never to be returned so, so, to my mother. So, 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 so let me stop you right here for a moment. Okay. Because because this is the TSM way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're telling your trauma story, mm -hmm. and I feel I'm with you. I mean, mm -hmm. much of it is similar. Um, and there's a bit of urgency for you to tell it. So if I just can I do just do what we call a body double. Yes, please. Okay, so, so a body double is help you to feel more connected to what you're telling mm -hmm. and more fully in your body. So mm -hmm. if what I say is right, I'm going to speak in as an I, I, I'm like an internal voice, an I, I. So if what I say is right, repeat it, put it in your own words, um, nod. If it's, if it's not right, then correct it right away. Mm -hmm. You know, 50% of the chance I'll be right by luck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm a little empathic, I'll be, you know, right a little bit more than 50%. But so I'm just going to breathe with you because we start with breathing. So if you'll just breathe with me, like, uh, I'm going to slow my breath down even more. I'm going to breathe in. I'm going to feel the feelings that are here as I'm telling my story. And I'm going to choose as we breathe out what I want to tell. 
You're gonna breathe in again. Being really conscious as I breathe in. What do I want to communicate? And as I breathe out, how can I be in connection with the beings that are watching this? Okay, so right now I'm being your body double. And I'm just going to stay here for a moment as you tell a little bit more of what you wanted to say. And I will interrupt if I think you're running down the trauma spiral without being fully present because your story is beautiful and it's very important. And it's as important as any other story that anybody will ever tell on your show. And for me, you know, I have created TSM through my own history, through my own thing. And if I can support you in this moment as being your body double, I could wish nothing more for this. So breathe. And now I'm going to say the rest of my story with my feelings. Sure. Oh, um, I can yeah. track. Where am I right now as I feel myself in my body <laughs> on the chair? The chair. Yeah. What do I want to say to you? What do I want to say to my people I'm talking to? So first of all, you know, I've done so much work around it and I've cried so many tears and done so many modalities that when I tell the story now, I don't relive it. So I have a little bit of a distance from it. Um, and, 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 I, and, yeah. and I was going a little too fast to be truly distanced from it. So I'm just going to slow yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> slow so down. perhaps, so perhaps it was slow down a moment because I've gotten a distance and I'm still a little pressured when I tell it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to slow down now and tell it just at the right time for me. Mm -hmm. Only me. I hope you get it. <laughs> but it's for me. Yeah, so yeah, I moved to live with my father that same day. I was 10 years old. Um, not before my father called the police and I was... Um, um, Basically, it was an investigation in front of three policemen, my father, mm -hmm. my grandfather, and my grandmother, past midnight, asking me all sorts of very embarrassing. I, and I was so scared. I, I was, was so very scared. scared. I was very scared. I really didn't yeah. know who I could connect with. Yeah, I was scared. I felt shame. I felt guilt. Um, shame that was not mine. I felt mm. shame that was not mine. My adult self knows it's not mine. Me yeah. too, me too, me too. Not me, not me, mm -hmm. not me. Mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. say that out loud. Yeah. It's as I tell yeah, my story. Yeah. Yeah, not me. So as I tell my story, I add something to it. Mm -hmm. I had shame. I had today yeah. I say. And today I say, mm -mm, not me. Mm -hmm. I felt shame that was not mine, but yeah. I had to work it through. And um, yeah, and it I've was, um, it. It, it, and I've done it. <laughs> I have done it. Um, I also missed one part in, in, in that scenario is when my mother first heard the story from my grandmother, her reaction was she took a bunch of keys that was lying on the table and she literally a bunch wanted of what? A what? keys a what? of keys of um, keys, keys. Oh, metal keys metal, metal yeah, keys. Like, yeah metal keys so she ah, picked up that ouch. bunch and she wanted to hit me and i will never oh. forget that fire look in her eyes and my grandmother jumped in between us and got hit on her forehead and started bleeding to protect so, you to protect, to protect you. me so that was very traumatic yeah. moment and so, then... so let me let me body double you again mm -hmm. slow down body double again so i'm just remembering that my my grandmother protected me mm -hmm. i'm not only remembering that my mother wanted to hurt me mm 
-hmm. Even bigger is my memory that my grandmother protected me. And I'm going to breathe that in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to breathe it in even. Yeah. Yeah. I survived this moment because my grandmother protected me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm actually honoring a moment I lived. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to breathe, take that all the way mm -hmm. to my sovereign being. That's your term, sovereign being? Mm hmm. Okay. From the top of your head, universally connected, I'm sure, to the tip of your toes, you tell us who you're connected to right now. I'm moving out of body double and back into workshop center. What did you just connect it with? I really, feel, I really feel my grandmother very strongly. So in IFS, internal family systems, we would ask you maybe to roll reverse or be her. And in TSM, we do the same thing because it's a healing role. It's a post-traumatic growth role. Mm -hmm. So move your butt just <laughs> three or four inches in your chair, okay? Yeah. Just yeah. three or four inches, okay? So, so now you're your grandmother and you're not looking at the camera or the, or the audience. You're looking at yourself in the chair just three or four inches close to you. What's your name, grandmother? Lila. Lila. Mm -hmm. Lila? Mm -hmm. What do you say to your sweet granddaughter in this moment? You see how she is today, and you see how she was then. You see both, because you, you're in the spirit world, yes? Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. see both? Mm -hmm. So what's your message today? Today, Lila, what's your message today? You are wise, you will be fine. Mm. And it's something she actually did tell me once in words and, and it brought me back to that moment that she have told me that looking in my eyes. Mm. Just breathe that in. Feel it. And see if there's any last thing you want to say to your granddaughter. She really needs you to say the new things today. Mm. She really needs to hear the new things again. I am proud of you. Say it in your own language. <laughs> she would speak to me in Russian. Um... Oh. Can you say it in Russian? You, say it. Say it in. Say if you can say it in Russian. Do that. If you can't say it in Israeli, but in say it in what in, in Hebrew. Yes, what you feel is your original language because it makes a huge difference when you say it from your own language. Ani mm -hmm. in Hebrew. You get a paragraph in Hebrew. Ani ge'a bach al kol avodah shat usa. Kol akavod lach. And just imagine all of your grandparents mm. around you. And then imagine another circle of the great grandparents. Mm. And then imagine another circle of the great, great, great grandparents. Mm -hmm. And go out into the infinite wisdom of where your sovereign being came from. Mm. And breathe all of it in. Use your arms, use your body, bring all of it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wherever it is for you, bring all of it in. Yeah, all over your being. Yeah, all this <sighs> positive transgenerational peace, right? This is where we start in TSM. We don't go for the trauma. We go for the positives. I mean, if we wanted to do, you know, three, four, five, six interviews, we would take, you know, take you down the whole map. But this is where we start. Mm -hmm. So put your hands out. 
And what do you see? Look in your hands. What, what's the gift you give yourself today from what we did? You just kind of like spontaneously went into all of that based on some questions. And what's the gift you get? What's the gift you get? Freedom. What does it look like? What's the object? What's the image? Because it's important to take the word, which is left brain, mm -hmm. into an image, which is right brain, body based. So what is the image? Just look there. It's there. The image is right there. I just see white light. White light. Ah. Why would you say just? White <laughs> light is the best absolute thing you can get. So I see white light. I Celebrate see white it. light. I see white light. Yeah. And I'm going to step back just for a moment in the double. Mm -hmm. I see my white light. I see this my white light. This is my white light. Through mm -hmm. all the traumas I've been through, mm -hmm. I have my light. And I'm I have my in. light. This is my white light. And I'm going to bring it in wherever I want, I'm going to bring wherever it's just right for me. All, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the way down. Yep, all yep. Feminine sexuality, yeah, breast, body, the whole thing. <laughs> right, right, right. Yes, right, yes, right, yes. Right, all yeah. white light. All of my being is white light. <laughs> All of my being, All of my white being. Light. and also sharing that white light with me. Ah, yes, yes. Mm, mm. Ah. Thank you, thank you. And we, and we mm -hmm. both share it to the whole mm -hmm. audience of whoever is being with us. Like, yes, mm -hmm. everyone can have the white light. Mm -hmm. In psychodrama, it's called your autonomous healing center. Ancient wisdom has it many things. Mm -hmm. But just feel it, grab it. Take it and put it into your being, wherever you want to leave it for today. Mm. Two more breaths. Body double is two breath, three breaths. Okay, because you slow it down enough that your neurobiology knows. Breathe in. Pause. Okay, one more time. Breathe in, pause. The pause is where the brain goes like, ah. And then you let go. Ah. It's that pause where the brain goes like, ah. Okay, I can rest. One more time, breathe in. Pause. Let the brain rest. And find your own natural rhythm of letting go. Mm. Mm. I, I feel quite privileged to work with you. Oh, thank you so much. I really had such a full body experience and um, really integrating quite a lot right now. So it's working on, yeah. on very deep levels and um, Mm -hmm. I hope uh, the audience can feel that as well as I'm feeling it in my body. So, so in TSM, it's important to take it from the body mm -hmm. and bring it to the left brain. Mm -hmm. So what's one thing that's going to guide you forward as a mantra, as an aha, as an insight, like one left brain thing that your body says like, ah, this is what I got, but it means that. Because th this is the thing with experiential things. If you, if mm -hmm. you don't do... My body says to my mind says to guide me forward, you lose half of the communication. So is it a word that resonates? That a, word, a word, a sentence, um, something that you know that you can call back to get to this place. What really comes is that white light again. Um, that, so yeah, it's an image. It's the image of uh -huh. the white light. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you see it in your eyes? Do you see it full brain? Do you see it around your whole body? Like, how mm -hmm. do you see white light? Like, I see it uh, all around my body and I see it inside of me. I actually, I, I feel, mm. you know, like you, you walk uh, through the clouds. It happens a lot where I'm staying in Cape Town. We, we often have the clouds very low and it feels very, um, it's it's not even foggy. It's just 
you're in the hmm. clouds it's white all around you and and that's how it uh, is inside of me right now all right so what is a sentence that you will use to call this back you see we've gone from experiential to imagery mm -hmm. which is left and right brain together but we need to end with a full left brain mm -hmm. because we're humans and so like a word a sentence something that can bring you back to these white clouds what comes to mind is protection this white protection. light protects uh, mm. yeah yeah and we all need that don't we mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. when we were offering to the group white light it's because we have it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if we don't have it we can't offer it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so want to offer with me again white light white, white light, light to protect you mm. yeah for everybody mm -hmm. take 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 <laughs> okay take 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 as much as you want there's enough for everybody mm. and then bring back to ourselves yeah, yeah so I feel like I've kind of done my gig. <laughs> it all just, you know, emerge spontaneously, which is how TSM does do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really thank you for being so willing just to go with the flow. Mm. Thank and you. I, I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything mm -hmm. you do for this process and for your... I, I can feel your spirit and you're such a mm. white spirit. Um, thank you so much for thank that. You. Yeah, well, it's a wonderful connection with you today. And mm. I will now um, ponder a bit more. I mean, I think I can just kind of give what we just did, like, what is your gift? You know, mm. I can do something like that and record that and we can have a gift that I give people following this. Great, and I will just capture it. Um, so the gift will be offered in time um and there will be a, a link that you can download it i will write cool. more about it cool. as it comes and if people yeah. want to connect with you i know that you're also offering training for trainees right for practitioners yeah, for, that, for, yeah for practitioners that yeah. want to learn how to do experiential trauma work safely <laughs> yeah, so um we have our website therapeutic spiral model.com Mm -hmm. And then I have my email, D-R-K-A-T-E-T-S-I, Dr. Kate, Therapeutic Spiral International um, at Mac.com. Um, great, great. We will have all uh, those details captured for you. And if you already in the field of helping people um, and, and you provide uh, some form of a consulting or healing or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah, you we, want we, to uh, yeah. really deepen your um trauma informed um training then please contact mm -hmm. dr kate thank you so much yeah. i really appreciate yeah. it blessings your way and until the next yeah, time thank we you meet. Nancy. yeah yeah it's beautiful thank <laughs> you so much okay <laughs>